Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Inspiration in a Box. We are so excited to be here. I'm excited, Sean. Are you excited? Totally excited, Big Bear. <laughs> it's so awesome, man. Uh, my name is Lee Kitchen, and I am an innovation catalyst, and today we are going to hopefully inspire you. That's right. I'm Sean Brown. I am an innovation catalyst as well, and we are super excited. This is our uh, presentation number two. And we're, uh, we're excited to get people coming to visit with us every month and uh, get people inspired with some great info. Yeah. And so before we get started, uh, for those of you who have not joined us before, we just have a couple rules we'd love for you to abide by. And you'll find that these are very similar to the rules if you've ever been to one of our uh, idea sessions or brainstorm sessions, really similar. So we want you to keep a positive and open mind. Uh, we are going to show you some really fun stuff and hopefully it will inspire you. And uh, we want you to share the air. So we have a chat here and we want you to uh, make sure you get, let everybody in the chat talk, make sure you're respectful to everybody in the chat, that, that kind of thing. Uh, definitely build and yes and. Again, a, rule, a good rule of brainstorming is uh, what we like to call greenhousing, which is adding, adding on and building on. So if you see something that inspires you, whatever that principle is behind that thing, make sure you add on uh, to the chat and let's keep yes anding and building. You'll find that Sean and I do it naturally. It's just one of those things we like to do. Uh, another thing that we're going to suggest is uh, pay it forward. So if you see something cool today that you like, um, towards the end of the presentation, we'll uh, uh, give you a, a link box. Is that what they call it, Sean? Yeah, a link tree. Yeah, link tree. Yeah, we'll give you a link tree with all the links. So if you see a link there that somebody else can be inspired by, please make sure that you send it to them. And bottom line, we want you to have some fun. This We're doing this to inspire you. Uh, we're just two casual guys, so we want you guys to be kind of casual too. So uh, just let's just have some fun today. Everybody good with that? We're good. We're good. Good. And speaking of fun, right? We are, uh, we are not technical savants, right? <laughs> so when we say anything can happen on this show, we literally mean anything could happen. Our power could go out. We might kick a cable. Uh, you know, probably heard of people that go and scavenge copper. Well, Lee has people knocking on his door at, in the middle of the night trying to take some of the copper wiring <laughs> yeah. from his studio. No, it's actually Amazon, dude. I'm, I'm totally, a, I, I'm, a, what do you call it? A primnesiac. So I never remember what I ordered. So any chance the doorbell will go, uh, Gunner, my uh, 90 pound Labrador Husky mix will definitely bark. So you'll definitely hear Gunner bark. <laughs> there you go. Well, we're psyched. You're going to see us looking around. We're using phones. We're going to try and follow chat as best as we can. We really want this to be engaging. We want it to be fun. Exactly. Um, so first of all, I just want to welcome some of our folks here. It looks like we have uh, we have Anne all the way from Los Angeles. What's up, Anne? Uh, we've got the Can Canadians represented. Ideas, Emily. How you doing? Welcome. We're so happy that you could be here. Uh, Janice is here, our, our good Disney friend. Uh, we got Josh chiming in from Grenoble, France. All right. That's awesome. Uh, wow. Welcome, Judy. I think Judy's there. Welcome, Laura. Uh, looks like Liz is with us. What's up, Liz? How you doing? And I'm not quite sure who So Seats is, so make sure you tell us who you are in the chat. And uh, we really appreciate you guys being here. And without uh, further ado, I think we should we should get rocking. Sean, what do you think? Well, Lee, we did make uh, we did make one upgrade uh, this month. Yeah. Right. Do you want to do you want to introduce our, our our friend our upgrade? Oh yeah, you guys. We have a producer, and his name is Jose. And Jose is all the way from Munster, Germany. Jose, how you doing, man? Hey, hey, how's it going, everyone? Nice to meet everyone. Hope we have fun today. Thank you. So every now and then you'll hear the voice of Jose as we call to him to make sure that we're covering everything in the chat. And you'll see he is Jose the Mod in the chat. So make sure you say hi to him. And Jose, thank you so much for being here, man. And it's almost five o'clock in Munster, Germany. So after this, we hope you go have a beer, man. Really appreciate you being here. And Lee, I do want to add, right, whenever you're on a Zoom call with someone else that has another time zone, you are absolutely in your right to adopt that time zone. I, I, that's a thing, man. I know. That's, you have to. <laughs> right. Also, Grab that's another great reason to be an entrepreneur, Sean. I have beers at lunch <laughs> constantly. Don't tell anybody. That's right. All right. You ready to rock and roll? Ready to go, buddy. Okay. Here we go. All right. Welcome, welcome. Here we go. Some inspiration in a box to help you see outside of yours. That's kind of our mantra here. So we hope to inspire you. Let's take it away. <laughs> oh, what is that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Lee that's and I us. Trying to figure out uh, who, who most represented us from the perspective of movies. And uh, 
Unfortunately, it was no one grand. It is Wayne and Garth. Absolutely. I mean, this is the modern cable access television, right? So we're basically in our basements doing a rock and roll show. So party on, Sean. That's it. Party on, Garth. <laughs> All right. Here we go. First one. So this is one that uh, we're, we highlighted Lay's last month because they did some really inventive stuff um, leveraging what's happening with COVID, right? And how it's impacting... I mean, just our day-to-day -day lives, the fact that we can't really travel. And so they had a series of chips of taste, um, taste around the world or get a taste of the world. Um, and saw through a person on LinkedIn, Lay's continuing to be inventive. This is not a new campaign for them, but Everyday Smilers. They started this, I think, in about 2017. But they're making it even more relevant, figuring out how to make it work, because um, they ask people to submit pictures of themselves smiling. So they're featuring about uh, 30 different people with 70 different different messages. And the people all are highlighting and representing first responders, doctors, people in the medical community that are doing great things. And the nice thing is, is this also goes on to support their, they want to uh, collect about a million dollars to help Operation Smile, which many people have probably heard of. It helps people with um, cleft conditions and helps them cosmetically to regain their smile, which is so empowering to people. But the thing that I love that Lay's is doing, right? They are taking advantage of what's happening right now and they are reacting pretty quickly. And it's just such, it's such a thing for companies and organizations to do. You know, we all come up with plans and we say we have 12 and 18 and 24 month plans. Well, sometimes the plan is, hey, there's an opportunity that just came up. Let's react and utilize it to our advantage. Yeah. <laughs> Just can't go through all that, uh, what do you call it, red tape to get there. You got to react and you got to do it fast. <laughs> That's right. This That's is funny, right. Sean. This is really funny because we I know Diana uh, is out there. Diana, how you doing? Uh, so Diana uh, came to my 50th birthday party and I asked her because she's such a great artist. I said, Diana, would you please take photographs of people? And I handed her my SLR and she took a bunch of great pictures, but she decided that there were so many guys with beards there. She took pictures of just the guy's beards from their nose down. And so I have like a collection of like 30 <laughs> beard pictures, but I thought what a cool alternate to just taking regular pictures. So thank you, Diana. Someday we're going to do something with all those great photos that you got. Love it. Good stuff. All right, let's move on. So this yeah. one was submitted by my good buddy, uh, Barry J. Thank you so much, Barry. This is, and, and what's really great about this is, and what Sean and I really love seeing is how businesses are, are pivoting. And uh, nothing was probably hit. I mean, a lot of things were hit, but restaurants specifically were hit really hard, the whole dining industry. So how do you rethink the, the dining industry? So this is a, a promotion that uh, the tech company Resi is doing uh, uh, in conjunction with American Express. They're doing a drive-through experience in the middle of October in Los Angeles at uh, the Hollywood Hollywood Bowl. Uh, no, the Hollywood Palladium, and it's going to yes. be catered by local chefs, and it's basically going to be a drive-through experience. So you're going to go through different, you're going to drive through one experience, and you're going to have ten different kinds of food. So imagine uh, the the old food and wine uh, party for the senses. It's like that, but instead of walking to each booth, it'll be driving to each booth. They're going to uh, provide you with a uh, with a uh, what do you call it? A tray, and they're all going to be COVID friendly. So they're going to have masks and uh, shields and things like that. And you'll just go to each station and get this gourmet food. And I, I just, again, I I love this concept because it really shows that you know it, back in the day, a, a gourmet restaurant won't let you even take let let you get takeout because of you know oh it's so sacred. And now they're really you know they're really no pun intended killing those sacred cows and having to do it at a necessity. And unfortunately, sometimes necessity really brings uh, great innovation. I can't wait to hear how this uh, how this executes. I would love to actually see it in 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 my town. I can't wait to see like. Like it, to me, this is a great opportunity for Spotify to also put, go in conjunction and put out the romantic playlist or something like that of the piano playlist, right, Sean? <laughs> Would that be <laughs> I cool? Like, that. I mean, there's so many other things that can just jump on on top of this one uh, one initiative and just really, really get it out there. So I can't wait to see how it plays out. You know, Lee, and, th and think about too um, of trying to find opportunities for people that are having a tough time with jobs right now. I immediately start thinking of I don't know why I go there, but the movie Ratatouille. And towards the end where he puts on his roller skates and he has to serve the customers in the restaurant, yeah, like right. opportunities for people to come out and serve. And it just expands on each other of creating, even if it's short term opportunities for, for folks that are having a hard time at the moment. I love it. Nice. Nice. So let's, let's go to the, uh, let's go to the chat. So Diana, 
Uh, she recently heard of someone uh, started a drive through art museum. Um, and that's, I mean, like, right now we're doing drive throughs We talked about it last time, Sean. The drive through movies are uh, having a resurrection, too. So what other kinds of things could you do in the, in the drive through kind of, kind of situation? Uh, Jose, any other, any other comments in the chat? Um, so far, nothing. Just pure good energy from everyone. So that's Excellent. great. Excellent. Thank you. All right, next up, Sean, let me just change this real quick. All right, go for it. AI vineyards. So what caught my eye when I came across this, two guys from MIT, uh, one guy took a wine class. And uh, it was funny because they say, well, usually, you know, people that are going to MIT, they get involved in, in AI and it's with a much bigger purpose. And um, well, they got into wine because they discovered it themselves. And then they figured, well, let's put some of our MIT brains to this. And so as they've created, and there's a lot of different um, wine clubs, right? You can pick the wine that you want. But what they wanted to help figure out through data and some, some computer stuff was helping people figure out, well, what is their taste in their palate? And then what could be recommended to them for it? So they have a, a pretty simple, relatively simple um, survey that someone will take. But then at the same time, <laughs> They're not dumb. They are collecting a ton of data on the wine industry and consumer preferences. And even beyond that, maybe what a lot of new people to wine are looking for and might expect. And while they're not doing anything with the data just yet, they have totally recognized that, yeah, what we're finding here, we might be able to share, um, taking into account privacy, right? So they're not yep, going to yep. share identities but they're going to be able to create personalities based on the information that they're gathering through, through the surveys that they're, that they're having consumers take. I just thought it was funny. MIT guys, some wine, and of course, drop in a, a side of comp supercomputer and yeah. you've, got, you've got AI. That business. is yeah. a productive use of a supercomputer. If you ask me, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's really great. Uh, really excellent. All right. So uh, we shared some more drive through stuff on there. That's great. Thank you, Diana, for sharing that. Uh, Haunted Road drive through in East uh, um, Orlando, Orange County, Florida. Thank you, Chris. And thanks, Chris, for being here. Welcome, welcome. Okay, you guys. So for those of you who used to attend our presentation back at Disney, uh, you know I was famous. And, and Sean, this is, wasn't mainly for you. It was usually with uh, my work wife, Gert. So I would always tell Gert, uh, Gert, don't worry, I won't put anything Star Wars in the report. And then, of course, I would totally fool her, and I would put something Star Wars in the reports. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so uh, th this is an ad campaign. It was sent to me by my good buddy uh, Paul in Atlanta. And come on, you guys. I mean, this is this is right up my alley here. And I was Sean, I was actually going to do a big reveal for you today. So I don't know if you know, but I actually go both ways. I like Star Wars and Star Trek. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, which so makes <laughs> nice that makes us that makes us bi fi just so you know so uh <laughs> I, this I, is an I, awesome I, campaign not quite sure if you guys have seen this yet it's an awesome campaign for uber eats it fe features mark hamill and patrick stewart and of course if you don't know mark hamill played luke skywalker in the star wars movies and of course sir patrick stewart played gurney halleck in dune <laughs> Actually, he is, of course, uh, Captain, the one and only Captain Picard. Uh, so this is uh, just a really great transaction. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to put this in here, Sean, is, you know, the, the, the brainstorm tactic that we have that uh, is called Force Connections. So putting mm -hmm. two unlike things together can really lead to some really big stuff. And, of course, you know, there's this constant battle, who, which is better, Star Wars or Star Trek. And this one, you know, it kind of, like, sums it up for us. So let's, uh, let's watch these videos. Hopefully you guys will be able to uh, see and hear the video. So here we go. All right. <laughs> of course the video didn't work. Let me try it one more time here. Stand by. We said insert uh, appreciation <laughs> for technical technical functionality. Yeah, I told you, man. <laughs> That's so funny. And, and super tested it too. Like we tested like a hundred times. All right, right, we'll try it one more time. Let's see if I can. Uh, let's see if I can get it. If not, we're gonna have to send you the link. And uh, uh, Jose, I don't know if he has the link to it yet, but maybe he can help us find it. All right, here we go. We're gonna try it one more time. Let's hope it works. Tonight, I'll be eating a veggie cheeseburger on ciabatta. No tomatoes. 
Tonight, I'll be eating four cheese tortellini here with extra tomatoes. Stuart. So it's come to the... Thank you. Bravo. Careful, I'm old daddy's not here to save you. Oh, I am my daddy. Come again? Wait, what? You said daddy's not here to save you. What the hell are you talking about? I'm not sure I got that right. Tonight, I'll be eating chicken tikka masala with garlic naan. Cheers. I win again, Patrick. That's Sir Patrick. Ooh. Sir! Tonight, I'll be eating roasted cauliflower tacos with spicy chipotle sauce. Thank you. Oh! Ah! I wasn't ready! You want cheese to go with that wine? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, come on. I love that stuff, man. Uh, I, I did a little research around the ad, and I found that uh, actually the two of them didn't actually meet until the early 2010s at a um, at a Golden Globe Awards. And and Mark felt like he, he you know, it's Sir Patrick Stewart, so he had, had to have an in. So he actually is friends with Brent Spiner, who plays Data on uh, Star Trek Next Generation. So he used Data basically as their as their middle ground to meet. So, uh, But they were, of course, both excited to work with each other. And if you read the interview, they actually want to do some kind of st uh, Star Wars, Star Trek combined universe thing. So who knows? Other oh hilarious God, things have, have happened, right, Sean? <laughs> well, you know what I love, too, is anything is possible, right? I mean, look at the, the the time span from Mark Hamill too, right? In his career, and he was really hot, really hot. Then he was gone for right. a couple of decades. <laughs> then he's back, and I was really hot again. I, I don't know. I just I love the Cinderella story. Cinderella story in a sci-fi way. It really is great. I saw him in a live performance at uh, South by Southwest a couple of years ago. Really hilarious person to be around. Just just a lot of character, <laughs> a lot of commentary. Really good stuff. All right, moving awesome. along here. So Rube Goldberg, I, you know, I, I am so mad I did not think to try and participate in this, right? While uh, on my extended furlough period, I totally should have done this. Um, so CBS Sunday Morning ran a story about Rube Goldberg, and I love that. Um, I love that this has been kept alive by his was it his daughter or must be granddaughter hmm. at this point. Um, but Rube Goldberg, so they have an annual competition, and they changed it based on COVID. And so the whole premise was build something that will deliver you a bar of soap. And uh, the winning <laughs> contraption, awesome. the winning contraption literally went uh, uh, a family's home. It went from their kitchen upstairs into their up second story, then back down the stairs and then finished back in the kitchen and delivering a bar of soap. But the, the thing that I loved about this was um, it was interviewing a son, a father and his son. And they had put in hours and hours and they said that after about a hundred tries, it worked once. And that was, they were, you know, trying to video wow. and capture it. it worked <laughs> on the one time that they were going to video. But man, you know, what this is, what this teaches, should teach everybody is failure is a good thing. Right? It is, right? <laughs> I mean, we worry so much about, well, it's got to be perfect. It's got to be perfect. No, it doesn't. I mean, how are you gonna how are you gonna gain any momentum if you haven't tried something and had something to learn from? So when I started thinking about that with Rube Goldberg, I mean, who were the guys that had that music video? There's a band. Oh, is it? Uh, it's okay, okay Go, and you know that I will play every Okay Go at this thing. As a matter of fact, thanks for reminding me because I need to start making that a regular thing. So, yeah, <laughs> back, back at Disney, I would always put the latest Okay Go video because they they just spent so much time and they did a whole video that was shot in one take on that in that Rube Goldberg, and it's it was just phenomenal. Yeah, totally phenomenal. So I, I just I thought it was a, a cool story. And I just uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to say, while I was home, I did Rube Goldberg a um, a fountain for my pool out of PVC pipe and glue. Nice. So I'm really proud of that. <laughs> Do you get video yeah, of that? Yeah. We'll have to see that sometime. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, going back to the chat here, Greg Ovision. What's up, Greg? Thanks for being here. Uh, there was a series of Epcot ads proposed with Sean Connery. That would have been awesome. Uh, Jenna, that was a hilarious video. I, and I love showing videos. And you guys will also see we are 
essentially marketing guys. So we'll probably be a little bit heavy on the, on the marketing material here as inspiration, right. but we feel that there are principles behind everything like that, that you could use and apply everywhere else. So just know that, uh, just because we put a lot of marketing stuff doesn't mean you couldn't apply it in other, in other businesses. And, um, <laughs> thanks Greg. Greg says he just watched an episode of Scooby-Doo with Mark Hamill doing a voice in it. And if you guys don't know, Mark Hamill has an amazing voiceover career. He is actually the single best Joker. And, uh, yes, I'm saying that he was better than Heath Ledger or Jack Nicholson, or, uh, I'm forgetting the new guy's name, uh, or that guy. And he is one of the scarier Jokers. He did it in the, um, in the, uh, Batman television series and also in the Batman video games. Really, I really amazing Joker. Huh. All right, next up is uh, Airbit Jordan. So we want to know how many of you all are Snapchat users and use Snapchat actively. Raise your hand, put your, uh, le let us know in the chat. So we love seeing when, when companies use uh, the digital medium to uh, do anything to reach younger viewers, things like that. And these, this is Nike doing um, Air Jordan, doing their Air Jordans uh, brand release. Uh, collection on Snapchat. So you can actually go to your to your Bitmoji on Snapchat and you can change it and put a series of Air Jordan stuff on there. You'll also be able to, it says here, you uh, it'll include the Air Jordan 35 sneakers. And again, all you have to do is tap on the, your Snapchat profile on the upper left, uh, hit change outfit, and you can get yourself some groovy clothes. Now, uh, Nike, of course, is, is experts at um, doing launches digitally. Their last digital launch was of uh, uh, their the last release of whatever shoe that they did it actually sold out in 23 minutes so they 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 put it online and sold out in 23 minutes and last year on snapchat alone they made 900 million dollars in sales so <laughs> i think they've got it down <laughs> uh going back to the chat yeah greg batman mask of the phantasm was an awesome theatrical animated feature with mark hamill as a joker on it too yeah it it, it was really really good um hey lee yes the one thing that um, Airbit Jordan can't do for me what is help me dunk. <laughs> That's I'd true. I'd really like to be able to dunk. That takes, Even if my Bitmoji that could That takes dunk, practice, my friend. That I would be practice. fine with that. <laughs> Definitely. Right. All right. Next up, let's go to the next one. Emotional yep. Air Intelligence. So this was, um, this was an article just about, not just about, um, leadership. Uh, now, of course, at the time that we pulled this article, <laughs> things have changed quite a bit with the airline industry in the last 24 to 48 hours, right? right? But uh, a long story short, so United CEO Scott Kirby, um, he's known to be uh, a very uh, straightforward, black and white type of person, right? Realist. Um, and what this journalist talked about is there's an email that, whether it was just programmed to get sent out at 3 a.m. or whatnot, but let's just go with it. If an email came out about 3, 3.30 a.m. from him to an identified group of people talking about the changes that United was going to make. And what he said, which I just totally value, is he admitted in the letter to, look, we have not done things right for the the last you know half a decade or decade we've been charging people for things and we've been generating revenue that has hurt the customer more than it supported it and we're not we're going to stop that wow um now there's some there's some um you know some things to the removing the change fees and stuff but but still overall the fact of having uh, the head of a company that will publicly come out and say it wasn't right we're making changes I just think that is so much more valuable for our society today to yeah. admit when you didn't do it right, right or when something was was done wrong. And I think it's a great a great example of leadership. That's funny because, you know, uh, Sean, I do a lot of meet and greets uh, with people that I meet. I do a lot of uh, hosting and emceeing happy hours. And a lot of the uh, younger folks want to do meet and greets. And I always, uh, you know, I'm happy to do that because if somebody didn't do that for me back in my day, I don't think I would have been where I am kind of thing. And one of the things that I always tell them uh, advice is, is honesty and authenticity, man. It's just, it's for me now that I'm out on my own and an entrepreneur on my own, I only want to work people who have integrity, who are authentic and who are honest. Right. And I have the luxury of doing that, but, um, it's, it's nice to see, uh, to see someone at the top really be like that. I work with a great organization called the adventure travel trade, uh, um, the, uh, association and their CEO, Shannon Stoll. He is the most amazing CEO. He is the most transparent, honest, 
uh, has a lot of integrity, and it's just it shows in all of the uh, all of the people that work for uh, that co that company are just the most amazing people. And it, it from coming down from the top, it, you gotta you know you know walk the talk kind of thing, and that's a uh, that's that's really admirable that he did that. There was a lot of controversy after that, but still, uh, really really great job. Kudos to him. Yep. Speaking of leadership, our next one. <laughs> Speaking of leadership and adventure travel, so. Patagonia, man, they have no qualms, right? They have no qualms at all about telling people how they feel. So uh, their their founder, uh, Yvonne uh, Chavard, she, uh, she had wanted to make sure that she told everybody that, hey, we can't take uh, we cannot take climate uh, change people ignoring climate change anymore. And uh, just as, as a disclaimer, again, we're not endorsing um, any candidate here, but. Uh, we appreciate their directness. So uh, it actually, this a message, vote the assholes out. Yeah, I'm not at Disney anymore. I can say assholes online. Woo! <laughs> uh, this uh, actually appears on their 2020 collection of uh, regenerative organic shorts for both men and women. And again, uh, what their message is here is they want to, they, they're defining assholes as politicians from any party who deny or disregard the climate crisis and ignore science. So... Uh, really, really great, uh, great thing that's uh, that that they're doing here. Really, just taking a stance, you know. And a lot of companies may or may not do this, so so kudos to them for taking a stance. And Lee, think about. I mean, this has to be the ultimate example of showing your stance. I mean, they sewed a freaking tag into clothing <laughs> right. with the word "assholes" on it. Right? Who yeah. does that? <laughs> right. I love it's that. Pretty, uh, pretty elevating there. Okay. This is great too, Sean. I love this that you pulled this, put this in here. So um, I, I don't know the uh, the the woman who wrote this article, uh, Mary Lemer, L-E-M-M-E-R, but she has a book and she's an improv comedian and a whole bunch of other stuff. We'll have the link in our link tree. Um, but long story short, she um, she she fainted in like 2019, and and she just. Uh, was not as healthy as she needed to be, and she needed to make some changes to things uh, in her in her life. And so she decided it was about uh, January 2020. She was going to do um, she was going to go screenless on Sundays, day of the week doesn't matter. But she said Sunday, I'm I'm turning yeah. everything off, and she did this religious <laughs> religiously, um, and even in some sometimes. Uh, like certainly during the start of COVID and she would be in her apartment and she said she, she had nothing to do, yeah. but she stuck to staying off the screens. But she said, and maybe it's a little, you know, cliche or, or whatnot, but um, she just opened up to so many other things that if she didn't pull herself away from screen time, she was missing it. Yeah. So her own creativity Right. She was journaling. She started to get into other activities that she liked going for walks outside. She would um, write letters to friends, which, you know, I think about writing letters and <laughs> Lee and I, Lee, you have bad handwriting. We should both be doctors. Yeah, that's why I don't write letters, Sean. <laughs> right. Right. We never write each other. We right. have to text each other. But, yeah. Um, it's really interesting. And, and I like the fact that just making it a habit. So consciously speaking uh, my family has always been a phones down family for dinner right and and we can't even bring the phones to dinner and uh, actually uh, my good buddy Josh who is on the chat Josh came to one Thanksgiving and Josh innocently pulled out his phone to add his calorie intake from the dinner that he was eating and everyone was like Josh and he was like what what he didn't know it was it was kind of violating a rule but um, kind of setting those parameters uh, it helps you too it kind of helps uh, helps you make sure that you make some consistency and a and kind of a habit out of it so I, I love this concept and and with your phones the most thing you worry about is being able to reach your loved ones so you can still keep the phone part on and so you can receive calls in case there's an emergency so keep that in mind because you can still do that and still be screen free right <laughs> and uh, uh, Diana Sor mentioned uh, digital detox retreats in camps. Oh wow! Put a link there, and I thank you for the link, Diana. You know, it <laughs> seems so simple, right? I mean, we should be able to just shut our crap off, but yeah, um, it's, hard to it's do. really right? difficult. <laughs> yeah. 
Really? My, my phone actually ran out of batteries the other night, and it was actually so welcome because I went to uh, hang out with some good friends of mine at a local restaurant. And I haven't been out in a long time, so that was nice, and just not getting bothered every two seconds was also nice. So uh, going right, back right. to the chat, yeah, Greg, we agree. There are definitely some decent executives out there. Just like anyone else out there, there are stale fish in the fridge. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so um, and books are nice, right? <laughs> Reading books is great. <laughs> And, you know, it's uh, it's hard to watch a movie without a screen, but, uh, you know, maybe you can listen to stuff. I don't know. You can listen to music and stuff like that. <laughs> All yeah. right. So let's see what's next here. Oh, this is your big one, buddy. Oh, this is it. All right, you guys. So this is the ultimate, ultimate golden ticket promotion. So if you've ever seen Willy Wonka, of course you know that the premise of Willy Wonka is that uh, he's going to give away his candy factory and he's going to put a, a millions of golden tickets out into the world. And the, or excuse me, he's going to put one golden ticket out into millions of candy bars. And if you open that one golden ticket, he's going to give you the candy factory. So uh, this this specific promotion has been done all the time it's been done over and over and over again and uh what i liked about it though is this guy was really uh, his name is david klein uh he's the former owner or founder of jelly belly he actually owns a series of of other types of candy plants and he just wanted to bring some joy to the world so uh, he's going to start releasing things actually as of september 30th he started releasing uh golden tickets in uh certain states there's a, there's a number of them you have to register and you have to pay 50 bucks to register so not quite sure what he's doing with that money uh but each winner will actually win five thousand dollars and the ultimate winner will get the keys to his candy factory in florida now the reason i asked sean to put this in here you guys is when i was a uh, brainstorm innovation catalyst at disney one of the things that frustrated me like to no end was that at every marketing brainstorm there were two ideas that always emerged two ideas one was a golden ticket promotion like a style of golden ticket promotion and the other one was a scavenger hunt and I swear, Sean, I don't know about you, but I, I felt like I was like not a good innovation catalyst because I couldn't get them to think outside of those two things. They always came up and it was so frustrating. And lucky for me, I have this amazing, smart fiance. Her name is Sarah. And I was telling Sarah this frustration and she's like, well, they probably do that because it's probably in our hu human nature to want the golden ticket. So we always want to find El Dorado and we want to uh, dig for gold and all that kind of stuff. And then we also were scavengers. So we constantly scavenge for things. So it's probably just ingrained in our brains to come up with these ideas. So I finally just started owning it and I was like, okay, you guys, these are two ideas that I'm going to go ahead and give you and let's just build on these ideas, <laughs> you know? So they're going to come out anyway, Sean. So let's not fight it. It's, it's just in our DNA. Just don't make sure they don't do it like the office. Did you ever see that version of the office that episode? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you remember that one? <laughs> they they had four golden tickets, yeah. right? And then Michael was going to give them out to all of his customers. Yep. And he gave <laughs> the four boxes all to the same customer. To the so same customer. <laughs> It lost the company $100,000. I thought that one was cute, though, because he actually dressed up like Willy Wonka and marched around. It was hilarious. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's uh, let's go to the chat here. Hey, Lisa, Day by Day is here. What's up? Yep. Uh, the golden ticket remote reminded me of all the times it came up in those brainstorming meetings. Just thank you for backing me up on that, Lisa. It was funny because uh, I, I, my former boss, Victoria, and I would actually put them on, uh, decorate the back of her door with those things. So that that was hilarious. Uh, Greg, it's worth noting that the movie was a huge flop in its release, but now it's known as a beloved classic. Yes. Uh, right. In the wake of COVID, companies should leverage their uh, back catalogs and see what the public responds to. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So that is actually our, uh, our last slide. Uh, we really appreciate you guys um, coming out today. Let me just get us back to here. And, um, and any, Sean, any parting, uh, parting thoughts or reminders or something like that that we want to give up to everybody? Yeah, while actually, I, uh, while we I would love if, um, if anyone wants to send us any uh, inspiration, please send it to us at brainstorminabox at gmail.com. We'd love to get some of your articles. We'll feature some. We'll go through it. Um, and then we have all the links to the articles that we found from last month and this month on our uh, Linktree account. And... Honestly, Linktree is one of the most amazing uh, digital innovations. And I can't remember how I came across it. I think some celebrity had it. But it's, it's uh, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E, Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash brainstorm in a box. And that one page, we have a list of all the links to the articles that we highlighted uh, to, uh, today and last week. Nice, nice. And then, um, I'm sorry I wasn't paying attention, but did you talk about the Facebook page? 
No, 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 no. Tell them. Yeah. yeah. So we are planning to start a Facebook community page. And what we love is uh, once we start it, we'll, we'll see that who's joined us before. We'll send you out an invite to that. And then if you see anything out there, we definitely um, can have you post it there. That might be easier than an email, either one. And then we will be doing a dedicated uh, Twitch feed too. So I will uh, be starting a Twitch feed just for inspiration in a box. If you're following uh, uh, me, LibbyXLT, you'll still get a notice about it because I'll do a I'll do a hosting thing where you'll see it both ways. Uh, but the next one, uh, you said that, Sean? I'm sorry, I was doing something else. <laughs> nope, nope, next one. Next one is Friday, November 6, 1130. Friday, November 6 at yeah. 1130. If you want to be on the calendar invite, I have an ongoing calendar invite, please make sure that you send that um, information and say, yes, I'd love to be added to the calendar. Uh, but until then, we appreciate you guys being here, Sean. Really great. And man. Uh, you can all, everyone who's not on Twitch, you can thank us for making you cool with your kids because now you have a reason. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. I spent a lot of time on Twitch. <laughs> Excellent. All right. We will hopefully see you guys, uh, see you guys uh, next week. And um, we will, uh, we will let's see, make sure I have the right slide here. Yep. Uh, we will see you guys next time. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, everybody. See you, buddy.